Now, there are many uh, uh, evidences about the uh, discovery of chemical techno technologies by Sumerians. There are many drawings or carvings, and as I have shown, crucibles. There is a drawing which shows that two Sumerian chemists are mixing a mixture. Uh, we will talk about it later on, but for instance, they were the first civilization to, to uh, invent uh, the fermentation of, of uh, barley to make uh, beer and fermentation of grape to make wine. It's not very clear, but definitely, if, if they are not the first, but they are one of the earliest civilizations who invented beer and wine. Beer was very popular in, in Mesopotamia. Uh, 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 it was, they were drinking uh, beer all day long. When they have lunch, they drank beer. When they had uh, dinner, they had beer. They were drinking beer just like drinking water. Does anyone know how the beer is uh, fermented or brewed today? Any, anybody has any idea about the, form, the production of beer? From which grain do we make beer? Arpa, barley, okay. Wine is from grape, beer is from uh, barley. In those days, barley was very popular because it's easier than uh, other grains. Uh, and they were making bread from barley also and, and beer. That's why they invented beer perhaps earlier than you know, wine because they were making dough and then the bread. And it's strange enough that for many years, Men did not uh, produce beer. The women, the ladies, the housewives produced the beer because they had the barley, they had the barley flour, so they were making dough. So they were making, just in the kitchen, the beer, but they were not making beer directly from the uh, barley. Usually they made it from the, uh, uh, from the uh, dough, which, which they just put, some water and then let it ferment. And uh, they were drinking, of course, a mixture of may maybe barley uh, solution plus some alcohol. Uh, it was a mixture. It probably it's, it's, it's uh, alcohol percent was not very high. Maybe that was uh, it was easy for them to drink all day long. But the ladies were the brewers. They were producing beer, not only in, in Mesopotamia, but later on in most of the countries in the world. It was the woman's job. And when people got rich, civilizations developed, the first uh, uh, beer uh, houses were owned by women. They were selling bread, and at the same time they were selling beer. So they had the uh, beer drinking, let's say, saloons, birahaneler. W women were running uh, uh, beer selling also in sometimes in, in some uh, comic books that you see hanji or hanji there's always a woman right there she cooks she makes bread she makes food in the han because you have uh, people traveling from one country to the other on horses or on camels you have to st you have to stop because it takes more than a month from one distance to the other so you have to stop every day or every few days to, to sleep and to, to eat food. So they were also offering beer there. So it was very popular everywhere you could find beer. And usually the ladies were the, uh, the producer of, of uh, uh, beer. So this is probably, they, they, they don't look like ladies, but uh, usually, of course, the men started. But uh, as the civilizations developed, it was in the hands of the ladies. So when you carry out uh, chemical reactions, of course, you need to separate the solid from the liquid form. They, they, had, they used various strainers and, and filtering devices. This is a strainer. And uh, this is another one. There's a little difference between the two. But if you look at this now, of course, there are some holes. Türkçe kevgir diyoruz galiba. Ölem diyoruz kevgir. 
of course the holes are big so if you want to filter much smaller particles we use filter paper so Sumerian chem chemists were using textiles as, as filter paper because they had, if they had to, to filter much smaller grains, they used uh, textile as, as filter. Uh, sometimes they used wool or, or cotton, just raw wool and raw cotton if they didn't have any textile. Now, it's actually uh, difficult for many people to understand the importance of cotton as a filter material. Did you know that if you use cotton, just cotton, not the textile, to filter a solution to trap the bacteria, you can do it. It traps the bacteria. And many biochemists, when they carry out a biological solution in a test tube, They put cotton on it. Affedersin. So this is to protect the uh, bacteria, keep the bacteria out. Hiç fark ettiniz mi böyle sıhhiyeciler, teknisyenler ellerinde tüp de üstlerinde böyle bizim biyoloji bölümünde de görebilirsiniz. Üzerinde pamuk kapalı. Yani adamın sanki tıpası yok da pamuk öyle değil, bilinçli koyuyorlar. Çünkü tıpayı koyarken filan daha bakteri girme şansı var ama pamuk da yok. Bir kere temiz pamuk kullanıyorsun. Can you imagine why and how cotton traps bacteria? But the textile cannot. When you have masks, textile mask cannot trap the viruses and bacteria, but if you have a, the, the one in the middle, which is not a textile, then you have three layer masks, the one in the center is not, is not a textile. Because when you have textiles, between the fibers, things pass. But when you have cotton or wool, they have a special physical property. If you look at them under the microscope, you can see why. Hiç gördünüz mü pamuk? On the fibers there are small very tiny fibers coming out and they are usually carved. And also, women and men in our hair, we have the similar structure. Wool and hair are very similar. We, we have, that's why your hair tangles after you take a bath. Not for men, but ladies, that we have long hair. Now, also, I don't know, <coughs> anybody has dog? So when you have a dog, the hair sticks to your pants or your skirts because the hair of the dog or the cat, they have small hooks. They, 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 they uh, attach to your uh, <clears throat> suits. Now this was observed by a French scientist accidentally. He, he, <coughs> he had a dog, <coughs> he was carrying <coughs> the dog and he wanted to understand why the dog hair sticks everywhere on his pants. He looked at them under the microscope, he saw them. That gave him an idea of an invention that we all use. I am sure that many of you now use it on your shoes or on your uh, jackets or whatever. Jirt-jirt. Discovery of jirt-jirt is because of this. And he noticed that there were hooks on the hair and it sticks to anything. He said, okay, why don't 
I take advantage of this and produce a material with hooks, very fine hooks, and then it can stick to anything. So he, he, he worked on it for, for maybe one or two years, and then he finally uh, succeeded to produce just, just today, and it, it became popular all over the world, just from the hair of the dog, having hook, okay? But Sumerians and other civilizations actually discovered something else. A product that we use today and they use in the past, keche. You know what keche is? Do you know how it's produced? From wool? When you see fetrushapka or fess, they are all keche. Felt. Felt. It's, it, it's not a textile, right? You put to get together layers of wool and you carry a very simple process and they become keche or felt. Because every single uh, fiber has hooks on them. They stick to each other. That's why they use something like keche in your mask in the, in the center. Outside is textile, back is textile. Üç, var mı içinizde? Yukarıda vardı bende. Üç uh, kademeli maske. Peki hiç duydunuz mu? Bunun içinde keçe var, bir şey var. Üç, yoksa üç tane tekstil üst üste değil. Kumaş kullanmayın. Bir ara doktorlar söylüyordu. Kumaş olan değil, içinde bu olsun filan. Belki dikkat etmediniz. So, that's why they produce a material like keçe from cotton. And they put it in your mask. Now, to convert wool or cotton to something like felt, you, you wet it, you apply pressure, but they add some soap. You, they use very dilute soap solution. And of course, when, when you watch it on video, how the, 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 the ordinary people who produce keche for various purposes, for, for, for um, uh, having a, a kind of coat, uh, I think they sell around uh, Hacı Bayram Cami, they used to sell keçe products. Böyle pelerin gibi ya da ne, nedir şeylerin giydiğinin adı, çobanların. Aba. aba, aba. Onlar hep keçe. So, they, they put it in, uh, in, in, in uh, soap water, warm, it must be hot, and then you apply pressure, but of course they didn't have press. The, the poor people, they don't have press, so they, they roll it and then they keep pressing it by hand many, many times until it becomes a keçe. Aslında bir de kadınların çok daha iyi bilir kız arkadaşlar, hani böyle keçeyi alıyorlar arasına, şey, yünü alıp arasına keçeyle süsmüs yapıyorlar, öyle videolar var. Orada da böyle roll yapıyorlar. So the idea is to make sure that these hooks attached to the other layer of cotton or, of course, in industry, they don't use soap, they use other simple chemicals to stick them together. But the idea is, in the mask, three-layer mask, is to trap the viruses and, and bacteria onto the hooks of cotton. So Sumerians, of course, uh, invented uh, and used uh, not only normal wool textiles, but they, they produced uh, felts, keçe, for various purposes. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about the first distillation apparatus in the world. That goes back 3,500 BC. About 5,500 years ago, they distilled wine or beer or vinegar and pro they produced alcohol and also acetic acid by this apparatus. Now, of course, when you try to use this to uh, distill wine or beer, 
alcohol will evaporate. So can you suggest how they may have used this apparatus with a simple additional uh, apparatus to collect the alcohol? Where would you think that alcohol, alcohol would accumulate? You have the wine here in the bottom. You are heating it up, and you'll collect the alcohol. Look at the structure and suggest, well, this, is, this is a crack, it's, it, is, it has nothing functional, it's, it's just broken. Where would you collect the alcohol? Pure alcohol, 96% oh, less, most efficient. Yes, please, yeah. between these two rims, two rims. So here you can collect the alcohol. But of course, you have to prevent the evaporation of alcohol. What would you do to prevent the loss of alcohol? Yeah, put a cover, just like your mother does in the kitchen. You know, when, you, when your mother is cooking something and when you open up the lid, you can see the uh, water drops in the lid, right? <clears throat> Same principle. <clears throat> of course, they are the smartest people in the world at that time. When they observe what happens in, in a pan when you cook something, they also observed that some water was perhaps being collected in their container. Güveç düşünün. Güvecin kenarında minicik oluk var. Onu toplamak için değil de kapağa koymak için yapıyoruz. Ama o kaldırdığı zaman orada da su birikir. Belki de o fikir verdi, bilmiyoruz tabii. So, they, they produced this, this 5,000, 500 years ago. And they obtained alcohol. And as I said, acetic acid. So, if I just draw the cross section, Now we will see that the other apparatuses are also in similar shape, but small details gives them a different uh, function. So this is the oldest distillation apparatus in the world. Yeah. Did they know that distillation process increased the uh, alcohol content? Of course, when you drink that alcohol, your mouth yeah, burns. Right. Yeah, when you drink wine, probably they didn't have go up to, today. Maybe about, you can go up to fourteen percent in, in alcohol in wine because we use special uh, bacteria. But in those, they just use natural, so they used to go up to five, six, seven, maybe ten, maybe up to eleven percent alcohol. So the taste of that alcohol with eleven percent, with compared to less eighty percent, ninety percent, totally different. And also, they know that it burned. So they know they know what they do. They knew what they did. Yeah. Not only by tasting, but the properties, smelling, everything is different. Color, everything is different. When the red, wine is red, alcohol is just colorless. Okay. Var mı? Başka bir soru var mı? Any question? Okay. Now, of course, we made the replica of this 
distillation apparatus. If you visit our uh, science and technology museum, if, I, if you have time, I'll try to take you there. Uh, we made a copy of it. <clears throat> now here we can understand how it functions, as we have tried to explain here. You have the wine here, it evaporates. You have the uh, uh, alcohol falling down, and then some of them are collected right in between the two rims. PowerPoint says göndereceğimiz abi, bu akşam gönderdim. Now later on, of course, uh, uh, after many centuries, uh, people developed uh, different kinds of, uh, or more efficient uh, distillation apparatus. This is about 1400 AD. Uh, Arabs developed something like this. And then they also made copper uh, distillation apparatus. Very similar, the basic idea is the same. same. So they uh, extended the, the height of the uh, rim. But of course, they were smart enough to put this over there so that it just dripped like our normal distillation apparatus. So after this, of course, distillation apparatus developed to the to modern distillation apparatus. Now, did you notice that we talked about the distillation apparatus 3500 BC? And then now we are talking about modernized 1400 AD, many centuries. I'll try to explain it later on, why there's a big gap. Now, extraction apparatus, this is again goes back to 3500 BC, 5500 years ago, they knew how to extract perfumes from flowers, how to extract some oils like kekikya or other uh, oils from dry or, or uh, live, uh, uh, fresh plants. The idea perhaps was to make medicine. I'm sure that the, the first chemists were partly chemists, but partly, part, partly doctors or pharmacists. Now, why would you, you know, play around with the plants, normal person? I mean, you cannot, you cannot earn any money. You waste your time. So you had to do on a purpose. Some something forced them. I mean, they were genius people. They tried to solve some problems. They or they wanted to produce something that they. Of course, they observed small things, and then they tried to design an apparatus which you can increase the product. I'm sure that when they observed that the, the woman in the kitchen, while she was cooking, opening the lid, you, you could see water, or maybe if he boiled wine some reason, and then he noticed that the, the drops in the lid was much stronger alcohol than, than the, the wine or something like that. So they said, let's design an apparatus to be more efficient. But you have to, the, of course, when you make a discovery or invention, you have to be a good observer. If you are stupid enough just to carry on, not to concentrate on something, you don't, or if you see something, you, you have to try to understand what it is, how it happens. Then you can be an inventor. But if you just look at everything, just like a child, without making any thinking, you cannot discover anything. So in order to see the detail, you know, in Turkish they say shaitan, Simple detail will trigger your mind to, to, make, to make a discovery. Now, let's look at this apparatus. Now, there is a difference, slight difference between the distillation apparatus and the, sub and, and the extraction apparatus. This is not a single, that this is a hole going through inside. You see the liquid coming down here. See, that's traces of traces of the uh, Sumerian chemists after sublimation. So there are some holes here in the inner rim. Why? Because if you collect something here, alcohol, after a while, when it reaches to this level, it falls down. And then you evaporate one more time. But of course, if you do it for wine, it, it's stupid. It doesn't, it doesn't help you. But if you want to extract, 
an essential oil from a plant, then it makes a sense. Now, the question, if you were a smart Sumerian pharmacist or chemist and you invented this for extraction from solid materials, liquid liquid extraction is something else, but this is extraction from solids, usually dry plants or, 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 or fresh plants. Where would you put the plant? Kekik or rose, where would you put it? Doesn't matter. You can put it in the bottom. Just put water or alcohol, but usually I'm sure they used water. Today, today we use water also. Steam distillation. Do you know what steam distillation is? Everybody knows? Okay. So you just have a distillation apparatus. You put the rose in the bottom of the container with water. You just boil it up. Oil, rose oil, comes out, if you send the steam, of course, with the steam, distills. So why do you steam? Why don't I just heat it up with a coal, but use steam? Is, is there a purpose why we use steam? It's different than Sumerians because there is a danger. Is it about liquid distillation? Sorry? Is it about liquid distillation? Yeah, but why do you need that? Why, what is the problem uh, with the uh, Sumerian apparatus? We, we, use, we can use it maybe 90% of the time, but for some materials, it's, 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 it's uh, uh, not recommended to use Sumerian sublimation technique. You can do it by boiling in, in a kazan. But steam distillation helps you, it gives you an advantage. Organic de it bahsetmiyor muyuz şeyden, steam distillation avantajlarından? Fizikokimyada da olması lazım değil mi? Fizikoda steam distillation'ın genel prensibi yok mu? Peki bir ödev verelim o zaman. So we have normal distillation, we have steam distillation, we have vacuum distillation. And steam distillation and vacuum distillation gives us a fantastic uh, advantage or advantages. Well, anyway, let's get back to Sumerians. So they put the dry leaves of plants into the bottom of the uh, mete, or they could put between the rims. We don't know exactly, but it, it would work in both uh, cases. But it would be perhaps better for them to put the uh, leaves or flowers between the rims. 
Now, you cover it, and then you have here water or alcohol or beer. Doesn't, depends on what you want to do. So again, just like in the previous case, the uh, water uh, comes down here, hot water, and extracts some of the oil from the uh, plant, and then falls down to the bottom. Now, when you boil, the water or alcohol cannot carry out the oil. Oil stays there. So you extract second time from the plant. Third time, fourth time, 1,000 times. If you let it go all night long until the morning, you, you can be sure that no oil is left in the dry leaves or dry flowers or fresh plants or fresh uh, plants of dry plants, doesn't matter. You have here in the bottom the mixture of oil and water. If you use rose, you have in the mixture in the bottom rose oil and rose water. Then, of course, you have a problem. You have to separate them. So they also invented separator of vessel. But let's go further, and then we'll talk about the uh, separator of funnel. So now we understand that if you want to extract oil from essential oil, essential ya diyoruz onlara, güzel kokulu olarak, from plants, we have to use the extraction apparatus. So if we repeat, the evaporation and uh, 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 then we, each, at every evaporation, we extract more oil from the original uh, plant. So when it evaporates, then when condenses, you have the hot water or mixture of alcohol and water, extracted the oil, then drip to the bottom of the container, but when you heat it up furthermore, oil does not evaporate. Just water and alcohol mixture. We don't know what they did. Beer, if you use wine, you up water and alcohol. Just pure mixture of water or pure mixture of alcohol or just a mixture. But it doesn't matter. It, the hot <coughs> solvent again comes and touches the uh, uh, dry roses or fresh roses. Again, extracts some more. Uh, oil, if you notice the uh, hole is not at the bottom, it's somewhere in the center. Because you will have here some liquid accumulated and then it will fall down. So that helps to, uh, to, to helps the uh, uh, extraction to be perhaps more efficient. Anlaşılmayan bir şey var mı burada soracağımız? Okay. Ah, this is the, the, the most all of these instruments were found in Tepegavra, just southeast of Turkey, in Iraq. Tepegavra is is a city. All all of these were excavated there. Now we made the replica of the uh, extraction apparatus, as you can see. Of course, we a little exaggerated to be more uh, to be easily understood. We have holes in here. You can see it's it's much clearer to see than the old photograph. Now, unfortunately, all these uh, chemical apparatuses uh, were in in, in um, Iraq, but. Uh, Many, many of them, I'm sure, were distracted. But we were lucky that some uh, archaeologists collected them, and they, they took them, uh, unfortunately, to the uh, United States, to America, Pennsylvania. And I think that they are all in Pennsylvania Museum. When I visited the museum, I didn't see any of them on the, on, on the uh, display. Uh, but I had a very short time. Uh, but I never read in any uh, 
paper indicating that they are there now because but the book of um, Levy says that they are in Pennsylvania Museum but usually the museums display certain things and then they take them down to the uh, stock room they rotate so maybe I was not lucky or I was stupid enough not to maybe go around and ask somebody I didn't have much time but uh, unfortunately many of these or similar apparatuses were existing in Iraq Museum in Baghdad when Americans invaded Iraq, the stupid American soldiers broke everything in the museums. I remember seeing the, the, the director of the museum, Iraq Baghdad Museum, she was a lady, and she was crying and hitting her hand. She, she was so sorry that she couldn't believe that the stupid soldiers could break things in, in the museum. They wanted to destroy their civilization. Therefore, I don't know, and nobody knows uh, if some of these similar apparatuses exist in Baghdad Museum, it's, 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 it's very unfortunate. Well, anyway, so now <clears throat> this is the cross section of the, uh, of the uh, extraction apparatus. We just give the dimension is 25.6 centimeters, the, the, the height, and the, the width is about uh, 49.6, almost 50 centimeters. There are two two drawings of two uh, extraction apparatus, but one of them was so damaged that uh, they couldn't take the photograph. So I explain here uh, how the uh, extraction is, is, uh, is uh, carried out. So you will, you will see it, I, I'll send it to you later on. Okay, I'll just go through. Okay. Okay. Now, of course, in modern times, uh, for um, solid liquid extraction, we use socklet, socklet apparatus. Did you? Did any one of you use socklet apparatus in organic? Yeah. Okay. Can anybody just explain simply what? Uh, you remember anybody? How how did how did it work? How to learn some sugar? Small tube, thimble, thimble, made out of paper. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a solid paper, just like filter paper, but it is uh, 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 you made in the shape of of, of a uh, tube. Okay, of other things. Yeah, pardon. Okay. There was a timbal then. Uh, we uh, placed the uh, material. material uh, in this, uh, in solid, material. solid material. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, solvent is uh, another. Uh, in, in the bottom flask. Yes. You have a flask in the bottom. Solvent. And we have something here, and the tube is here, right? And you have the uh, uh, dry material, dry solid here, and you have condensers. So vapor goes up, falls into the timber. Of course, there, there is a connection here. It, it extracts the solid, goes down, on and on and on. I, I'll show you the uh, picture so you can recall what you have done in organic lab. This is the person, his name is Soxlet, Franz von Soxlet. He is the German uh, chemist who invented uh, Soxlet apparatus in 1879. And this is the, uh, the picture of the uh, uh, Soxlet apparatus. You can see the timbal here. Timbal is right in here evaporates, falls down, and then there's a siphon here, siphon. Biliyorsunuz su tuvaletlerde olduğu gibi buraya kadar sıvı yükseliyor yükseliyor. Bunu geçtiği anda hepsi aşağı iniyor. Hatırladınız mı? <gülüyor> Now let's see. If we can see how it works. Okay. 
as you can see, you have the solid material in the thimble. Alcohol, let's say, evaporates, condenses, and then drops into the thimble, extracts the material. But as the level, uh, level of liquid goes up, it goes not only here, but at the same time over here, it siphons back. Defalarja dunya. Reflux, refluxing, okay. Reflux condenser, you call it, okay. okay. Son derece karmaşık bir alet bugün yapıyoruz. Adamlar bir tane saksıdan yapmış. Now, now we all understood that solid extraction, solid liquid extraction was first uh, invented by uh, Sumerians and we know the basic principle of Sumerians which is very similar to our modern Sakslet uh, uh, apparatus, but of course their product was more primitive and of course less efficient. Now when we talk about extraction, there is another extraction. I'm sure that you remember, you will remember from the organic chemistry lectures, that's liquid-liquid extraction. Does anyone remember what liquid-liquid, you have something in a liquid, you transfer it for an, to another liquid. Do you remember? From organic? Can you explain? So yeah, we produce shaking with a separatory form of Okay, okay, just a second. Let's do it step by step. We have a separatory funnel. Mm -hmm. And we have a mixture of liquid. We have a stopcock. And we have two layers, right? Okay. One is at the top, one is at the bottom. This is what? Ether, is it? This is water. Is that right? Okay. Where is the organic compound? Normally, in water. Are you, are you are going to... Tra tra I'm going to transfer it into ether by shaking. Therefore, it should be in the water in the beginning. Why organic compound went into the uh, uh, to water layer? Why? How, what, what did you do to it? What kind of distillation did you do for that? At the end of a distillation, you have some organic material dissolved in it. Okay, but anyway, so then but, but how, how am I going to transfer the organic from here to ether? Ne yapıyordunuz laboratuvarda? Sallıyoruz. <gülüyor> sallıyor sallıyor. Kapağını açıyoruz ki neden o için? <gülüyor> Gaz dedi eter buharlaşıyor. Çünkü motion creates energy in the form of heat. So the, the, do you remember the boiling point of ether? Lower than your body temperature. 34 degrees centigrade. So when you shake it up, it heats up, evaporates part of it. Therefore, you have to open up, not to prevent explosion. If it, if it just goes up by itself, you lose some of your liquid. So therefore, that's why you, you just shake it like this and then immediately open up the top. And you do it many times. And then after a while, you say, well, probably most of it went to the uh, ether layer. Then you uh, 
let the uh, water level uh, to, to just drop down to your container until you reach to the uh, ether layer. Then you collect it separately in another container, right? Okay, Sumerians knew this technique. So they separated oil layer from water layer. So this is, you will read it in, 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 in the, in the uh, uh, PowerPoint later on. This is the uh, separatory vessel of the Sumerians. Work just like your uh, uh, apparatus. Now, again, it, they all look like each other, but simple details. You have a uh, opening here, a an opening. You put the uh, mixture of oil and liquid phases together. Oil is at the top, water is in the bottom. You put here a piece of wool as a cloth or a cloth. You put a container here, open up, water layer comes down, right? Then you close it. When you see a few drops of oil coming in, then you change the container. You put another beaker or another cup. You know that here now you have only uh, only uh, organic layer in the bottom, but you don't care about what's left in the bottom. When you open up, only the oil face comes down. Okay, so they were smart enough to separate oil layer from water layer without seeing it. It's hard to, open. Hmm? It's hard to separate layers uh, without seeing. seeing. Yeah, but. When you collected the water layer, you see a few drops of oil coming, then, then you stop it. Yes. Okay? <laughs> so that's genius. Okay, we also made the replica of the, of the uh, separator vessel. In, in, uh, it's, it's in the museum. So I'll explain here what I said now. Two layers are separated. Okay. 